All right, guys, welcome back to another video. So in this one, we're going to work on painting and polishing up this plane, getting it looking real snazzy. So when we finally get around to making that new tote and knob for it, everything on this plane is just going to look super, super sharp. And so our next step here is to go through and paint all of our painted parts, because I found that this is the best thing to do. If you go through and paint, and you're, as long as you're using a good quality paint, that's not going to get worn off very easily. You want to go through and paint, and then you want to do all of your polishing that afterwards, all or like all of your cleanup and that afterwards. So we're going to be painting the body, mainly the main section here. We do got to avoid painting the areas where the frog contacts the body so we just got a few spots that we're going to tape off on the inside there same thing on the frog we're just going to make sure to tape off our flat spots here where it contacts the body as well as as much on the front face as we can and still leaving open our smaller areas there now the nice thing about the frog with this front face here is if you don't do a great job of taping it off it doesn't really matter because you're going to be going through and polishing it up anyway so if you get a little bit of paint on those flat surfaces it's just going to get ground off anyway when you do that polishing step and i'm going to be using an airbrush to do all of my painting here just because i found it's a nice easy way to get a smooth and uh, consistent coat of paint over all of my pieces here as well as it lets me get into some of those smaller nooks and crannies a can of spray paint can do the exact same thing i just have an airbrush just sitting around so i figure i can use it on these projects to make my life a little bit easier i'm also using a very fancy custom mixture of trim clad paint basically it's 50% gloss green and 50% flat black which kind of gets you into this kind of weird semi gloss color anyway it looks really good I, I really like the color itself uh, the uh, the glossiness is not ideal in my opinion I'd prefer something that's a little bit more matte but sadly there's not a whole lot of it, options out there for actual oil based paint so you got to kind of work with what you've got So while the paint on those parts is curing up, we're going to go through and do all the polishing work on all the raw metal parts. So I'm going to be using a mixture of my lathe as well as hand sanding to get all these pieces buffed up. Most of the round stuff like the bolts and screws and all that can all be done on the lathe quite easily. So I can use some scotch brides, I can use some, some high grit sandpaper to get a nice polish on there. But then on the lever cap, I'm going to have to do this all by hand. So it's not going to take a whole lot of work because again, this is hardened steel. So the sandblaster didn't do a whole lot of damage to it. So it should be fairly easy to go through and just kind of clean it up and get it nicely polished. But then once we have all these parts polished up, we're gonna be using a cold bluing solution on them to turn them kind of a gunmetal gray.
Okay, so I'm gonna take back what I said before. We're not actually gonna be using the cold bluing solution on these pieces that I just polished up here because I think that they look too good to do that to them. Because I was looking a little bit closer at one of these other planes that I finished and I really like the silver in there. I think it just complements the dark green really nicely as well as the natural wood. Plus the whole body of the plane is obviously gonna be silver no matter what we do. Whether we cold blue it, that's, that's that cold bluing is gonna kind of wear off as we actually use the plane itself. So I don't think there's any reason to go through and cold blue all those internal pieces just because they're gonna look different than the outside and having this kind of overall silver tone looks pretty good. But the other part of it is that our pieces have actually held on to a lot of that history. Again, this plane is over 100 years old, so the steel and a lot of these, and the iron in that, because we have steel and we have iron in these planes. But anyway, there's there's a lot of these little just like pop marks and divots in that. And the thing that I really like about the way that I just went through and finished these is I didn't use anything super aggressive. So the sandblasting knocked off any kind of your surface gunk, uh, any of your rust in that. Then I used these 3M maroon scotch brights to just go through and buff the surface. And those scotch brights leave kind of a brushed finish. They leave, the, you know, it looks kind of like a brushed steel finish. Then on the chip breaker and as well as the front side of the blade here, I went through with some 4-0 steel wool and brasso, which is a, a, just a fine metal polish, and just polished them up. And what this is really nicely left is you can kind of see it on both of these pieces here, how we have all those little pop marks in that. And there's, you know, there's not a ton of like grittiness to it, but there's still definitely a whole lot of history to it, which I think is very, very important to these pieces. So our pieces are all painted up now and they're looking really good. I absolutely love this color because it's kind of, it's not quite black, but it's also not like a super obnoxious green color. It's just kind of that nice, rich, dark green. I really, really like it because it also kind of makes my tools stand out a little bit. But what we're gonna do next is actually gonna make my tools stand out even more. We're gonna go through and do all of our lettering. So just using a super fine Levanza 4-0 uh, paintbrush, we're gonna use some red Trumquad paint and just go over all of the letters and numbers on here and just highlight all of that stuff. Especially since we have these three patent dates on the back, I think that's gonna be really cool to have those kind of highlighted when this thing is all done so that you can always know that this is definitely a very old hand plane because Again, when you see, as soon as you see those three patent dates, you know that this is a very old hand plane, and uh, yeah, it's just gonna be really cool to have that highlighted. So it's been a little over a week, so I know that the paint on here is fully cured up and ready to move on to the next stages, which is actually truing up the body, fitting up all our pieces, and kind of getting ready for that kind of final fit up of this plane. Obviously at the very end we're going to be making the toad knob which is going to be a lot of extra work and that's going to be its own separate video. But on this one I want to try and finish off and get everything together so that we have the majority of the plane put together. That way we can just kind of put the toad knob on there nice and quick and easy. So now we're left with some very uh, fairly rough looking stuff. So we still have that nice sandblasted texture across all of our pieces especially on the plane body here. We also have quite a bit of overspray as you can kind of see on some of those areas there especially on the bottom of the front there. So that overspray was completely intentional because any areas where I know I'm going to be grinding off a little bit of material, either flattening it, smoothing it, whatever. It's not really worth taking all the effort to like perfectly mask it off. Again, another perfect example of this is the frog. I know I'm going to be doing a ton of work to the frog, so I decided to just not bother masking off that whole surface because that takes way more time than it's actually worth. And plus, once we go through and grind all that nice and clean, it'll all that paint will disappear anyway. It's a nice thin layer, so it'll come off super quick in the whole process here. So in order to give us a nice accurate flattening on the body of the plane, we're going to be using this granite chunk, which is a precision surface. These are meant for like machining in that as a nice flat reference surface. These stay perfectly flat and I found it's very helpful to have one of these kicking around if you're doing stuff like planes because when you put some sandpaper on this granite surface, rub the plane back and forth, it helps perfectly level it out. 
And while that granite plate and some sandpaper is going to work really well for the body of the plane, for the frog, it doesn't actually work because we're going to have to tape down that sandpaper somehow, attach it to that granite plate. So when we're doing the frog, we need to be able to get in and around the lever adjuster, which means we can't just flatten off this face. Now you can remove this lever adjuster, but with the whole riveting process, I figured it's just easier to leave it on there and kind of work around it. So in order to flatten off this face of the frog, as well as the bottom sides of the frog, I found that it's just way easier to go straight to the sharpening stone. So you can either use a diamond stone like I have here, a thousand grit stone. Uh, if your surface is not actually too bad you can even start even on like a 3,000 or even 8,000 grit stone the first one of these that you ever do is going to be a little bit nerve-wracking because obviously you can kind of screw up the whole plane if you mess up the surface but once you kind of get the hang of it and once you figure out what you're doing it's a fairly easy thing to do again the big thing is just make sure you're moving an even amount of material from both sides and you guys will see how I do that as we go through kind of the video footage coming up here and so I can't stress this enough on both the frog and the body here you want to remove as little material as absolutely possible so on the body here I'm gonna be starting at 180 grit and the same thing like I said with the frog if I notice that there's areas that I can't remove enough material, then I might drop down a little bit. But I want to start at a nice high grit. That way, if it starts polishing off and getting flat very quickly, then I don't. Then I know that I'm not going to be removing too much material. Now, as far as plane restoration videos go here on YouTube, this is probably gonna be one of the worst ones you're gonna see. Because the way that I restore my planes, and I've restored quite a few planes now, is I don't restore them to absolute perfection. I wanna leave some of that roughness on them because what I'm looking for is a good user plane. So as long as the sole is nice and flat and everything is fully functional, that to me is that that's my only standard and I actually really like leaving a lot of the rough marks in that in the shoulders and that uh, even in the sole we've got some areas that are not all polished up we've got kind of in the front area here same thing on the back areas where it's not perfectly flat I just need this as flat as I can get it because what I love about stuff like this is it really shows the history of the tool because even though I've gone through and I've cleaned it up and I've put all this work into turning it into something basically new we still hold on to a lot of that history the other part of that is I know exactly how these planes are going to look if I go through and make them all shiny and clean up within a couple years they're going to look exactly like this plane here so this is my 350 dollars veritas low angle jack and you can see how on the side we're pretty scratched up because i do use this on my shooting board on the other side we're kind of some like grease stains and rust marks and that you know we've got it's you know i take very very good care of this plane but i don't continuously keep it polished up and that's exactly the way that i'll treat these planes as well i'll keep them nicely cleaned up you know we'll keep the rust off them but they're going to get those grease stains they're going to get those marks and that on them and there's really no point going through right now and fully polishing up to the most beautiful standard possible because it doesn't really change how well the plane actually works.
So we are so close to having a finished hand plane here. Obviously all we're missing is a tote, a knob, as well as giving the blade a quick sharpen to see if you can still hold an edge because that's one of the things you gotta watch out for in some of these old planes. Sometimes the blades have been through certain damage in that in the past and they can no longer hold their edge. But we'll see that in the next video. So as always guys, I do hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next one.